Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. Uh, for some of you who are familiar with the senior members of NSDC when it was formed and soon after that who took up many leadership roles, uh, you would have uh, heard about Mr. Rajiv Mathur. He was heading and he was the senior head actually of standards of uh, various initiatives uh, which concerns creation of QPNOS, uh, you know, aligning with the industry and also taking an active uh, role in uh, forming of the sector skill councils and so many things which were happening at the inception stage of NSDC. So we have with us today, Mr. Rajiv Mathur. Uh, welcome to this talk, sir. Today, he is the CEO of Skilled India, a very important organization in the skilling ecosystem, skilling and vocational education ecosystem, which is contributing in a big way. So let's learn about uh, Skilled India and also uh, hear about the story of those years of NSDC when they were struggling to put many things in place, give it a shape and really uh, form many of these things that we are taking uh, for granted today and using them as QPNOS and also aligning them with uh, all the competency levels and so on. So, so can we hear about uh, Skilled India first and then we go uh, to the story of uh, QPNOS and other contributions that you did when you were at NSDC? Uh, sure, Madhuri. Uh, at the outset, I think, first of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, picking me up for this uh, very interesting conversation. Thank you for that. Uh, so let me let me start with uh, talking about uh, my current organization, which is uh, which is actually having two names, interestingly. One is uh, a business name, which is Kedman, K-E-D-M-A-N. And... Uh, Sorry, it's, it's, it's a legal name, Kedman, and my business name is Skilled India. Now, Kedman actually is, it's, it's a, it's, my company is actually a joint venture company of uh, two giant uh, education uh, systems. One comes from Sweden, which is called Kunskapskolen. Mm. It's a, it's a multinational uh, school chain. They have uh, some 200 uh, plus footprints across Europe, uh, UK, um, and Saudi uh, U.S. and in, in India, they have four. And in India, they work jointly with uh, uh, an university called uh, Manavrishna University, mm. right? And uh, Manavrishna, you know, there are two universities in the same campus, uh, one dental college, engineering college. So there are like large education giants, plus they also have uh, their eight uh, schools by the Manavrishna brand. And uh, four schools, as I said, along with Kunskap School. Mm -hmm. uh, way back in 2017, uh, it so happened that uh, Manav Reshna, Kunskaps Kolan, and NSDC decided to form this company, which I am now heading, uh, for a very specific purpose to bring uh, the Kunskaps Kolan education learning methodology into India, okay. uh, especially in the vocational space, because uh, that was another portfolio I was handling at NSDC, vocationalization of education in schools. That's how the whole journey started. And uh, today, my organization, uh, which I'm heading, I, I moved here in uh, 2019. And uh, today, it's uh, essentially uh, focusing on four verticals. Uh, one is uh, we have transformed ourselves into a fairly, we are fairly good business that we are doing in the area of ed tech. Mm -hmm. so, so we have a lot of uh, ready to use uh, digital vocational content uh, which is there with us in a number of sectors yeah. and uh, the interesting part is that uh, it has two very important uh, components into that one is that it is completely mapped to the QPNOS mm. and uh, leads to the skill india certification approved by the sector skill councils and the second is that uh, it follows uh, a very unique uh, kid learning methodology mm. Uh, which comes from my parent organization. So that makes it a uh, very unique, uh, learner-centric, very high-quality content. Uh, it's not a PPT, which is that. It's a very comprehensive, full course uh, aligned to a QPNOS. And then we have now also entered into the space of doing a bespoke uh, vocational content development. Mm -hmm. both for the national as well as the international. So that's one vertical of being an edtech 
organization. The second area where we are uh, we have entered in a big way from this year is uh, setting up multi skill development centers. Okay. Uh, that with uh, taking the CSR, we also have a foundation, uh, Kedman Skilled India Foundation. And this foundation uh, takes the CSR money. And uh, so we, we have some big alignments which have happened. And uh, some of the skill centers we are opening up in hospitals and some of them near the uh, CSR contributing uh, uh, the, the, the workers where they stay or the factories, you know. So it's a very different kind of a model that we have created, carved out. And very interestingly, uh, either leading to employment or entrepreneurship entrepreneurship, uh, that kind of job role. So that is uh, one uh, very big USP. And then, and of course, the complete training happens on the kid learning methodology, the Swedish methodology that my parent company brings in, which, bring, which creates a differential uh, learning. And actually, it will be a big contributor and my plans are to make it big this year itself. So I think we should be contributing in a big way uh, to the Skill India movement set by the government. Uh, the third segment that we focus is, uh, that's a new baby, I would say. <laughs> that's uh, into skill development consultancy. Okay. Boutique consultancy in skill development. And uh, we want to have a big footprint in this area. Few successes are already with us and we are moving. And uh, so so if you, if you really look at it, uh, the big force, all of them have a skills practice which means that uh, there must be some uh, good business lying in this area. So that makes me think that uh, that's one area we should be progressing and we have started focusing on that, right? And soon we will be uh, putting up our credentials to pick up even uh, the government uh, consultancy programs or maybe under the World Bank or whatever, ADB, et cetera, et cetera. We will do all that. And and the last segment where we focus is uh, vocationalization of education in schools, uh, which uh, which which uh, which we they basically the thing which we started off where we are getting the kid learning methodology of the Sweden into the schools where we do a lot of structure infrastructure changes in the school in the government schools specifically if I say so, and we are doing it alignment with the state education boards. So right now we we started this whole initiative in 2019 and then 2020 lockdown started and this year the things have opened. But in 20, 2019 itself, we were able to spread it to some 17 schools yeah. and currently 5,000 kids are getting benefit um, in three sectors, retail, IT and beauty and wellness. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you just mentioned about the KED learning methodology and also its application in the vocationalization of schools. I'm sure our audience would like to know more, especially in the backdrop of the fact that uh, the National Education Policy 2020 is recommending a lot of uh, vocational subjects in even in schools uh, like, you know, the private yeah. schools, not just the government schools, like uh, all these Delhi public school kind of public schools and others. So, uh, how does it help so there uh, if you want to implement this methodology what would be the advantages maybe you can give us an example yeah, of sure yeah yeah sure i i would like to do that you know this kid learning methodology as i said it's a proprietary learning methodology of kunskap skolen hmm. which they use uh, in all the schools uh, worldwide right so if i if i give a very simple summarization uh, you would you will recollect that in our times and even today, uh, if in a, in, a, in any school system, there's a class of 20, 30, 40, whatever the number of students may be, uh, some students are always at a higher pedestal, some of them are at the lower. That balance, imbalance always is there, right? And uh, it continues, right, from a lower class to a higher class. And after some time, teachers also start paying attention to the smarter ones and this is how the ecosystem has been moving. Yeah. And the same thing actually goes for in the even in the vocational education, right? Mm -hmm. But when we talk of kid learning methodology, so there are various parameters which are brought into the training delivery or the education delivery. All right. And the child or the learner is put at the center and all the things are 
enabled around it in such a manner that the whole learning experience of the child or, or of the trainee is such that that they are able to reach to a particular level so that they are not absolutely at the bottom but they come to a particular level where the learning is enhanced so the results of cones cap stolen mm -hmm. are much higher than the traditional system okay. essentially digital plays a very key role into the training delivery if if you, if, if i talk of the cones cap stolen schools uh, the tabs are given right from the class one when the student enter, enters because Baiju's has come now into the system, but they have been using this kind of digital learning platforms, enabling the learning of the kids for the last 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it is an integral part of showing her. And then another thing which they do is that, you know, when they are teaching a particular topic, mm -hmm. right, they, they would actually integrate it with various subjects. So a child sees it from a holistic point of view. Mm -hmm. That how it is impacting science, social science, history, this, that, you know, and this is how they see it in a in a in a in a vertical manner. So it's it's a very different methodology, and and here also in in our system, what we have tried to do it, of course, education and skill development, they have they have they have a shade of difference, right? But what we have done is that we have first of all made digital as the backbone of the training delivery and enablers, the trainers, the learners, everyone to get benefited. So if I talk about the framework of how we have created our uh, digital content, so it mm -hmm. has essentially three components for the trainees. It's, it's start every, every, uh, so it's a, there are NOSES, NOSES are converted into uh, a, a curriculum, right? And each curriculum, each each part of the, uh, the topic, right? Is broken into subtopics and each subtopic would have three components start it learn it and do it okay. start it is basically uh, a pre-diagnostic mm -hmm. just to check how much you know mm -hmm. prior to uh, before you're entering into that subtopic learn it is actually learning that small skill which mm -hmm. is required that you, you know and that is either through a video a live shoot video or an animated or it could be any any we call it a learning resource Mm -hmm. After learning the source, then a set of questions which are asked to the student, we call them checkpoint questions. There may be multiple videos within a sub module. And after the child does, uh, sees the videos, at attempts the questions, the learning suddenly goes high because the visualization of something is happening live in front of the student. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And after this theoretical part is over, then they move to do it, which is the practical. Part. So whatever you've learned in theory, how you have to apply uh, mm -hmm. What are the components required? Do it. So the, it's so much of granularity has come in. So brick by brick, you are you are building the learning of the child so that the child is able or the trainee is, is able to reach to a desired point of learning. Yeah. You are very uh, successful, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting to hear about the modularized uh, way of, uh, you know, learning and also like you mentioned the granularity and I think it's a very nuanced uh, way of presenting the content also which could be perhaps making a huge difference uh, in the learning uh, entire learning ecosystem uh, yeah. now if in case uh, there are people or organizations who wish to partner you or learn more about you how is it that uh, you know they can approach you <laughs> we'll be very happy to actually uh do and collaborate um, uh, with a lot of companies. Like currently what I have done is that I have already done sign-ups with a uh, couple of sector skill councils, mm -hmm. a couple of uh, big organizations like uh, AHPI, for example, Association of Healthcare Providers in, in India. They are the CI of uh, hospitals. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have Global Healthcare College Sweden. So a lot of people are already aligned with me. And so today what I have discovered is that it's, it's the world where you have to work in collaboration. You just can't achieve anything on your own. If you attempt, you'll fail. Mm -hmm. And this collaborative model of working with people is, is working so well with me. So in fact, I would say that if anybody has an interest to come and uh, partner with us, I'll not say uh, that we will, so we'll, we'll do the business jointly is, is, is what I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to say. A lot of organizations have come and spoken to us we have uh, we have partnered with them but we have partnered in such a way that 
it's a collaborative model. Okay. I'm not trying to take money from them, but it's a long-term association that I'm looking at. If somebody says that, yes, I'm, I'm game to have a long-term relationship, I'm game. Okay. So all that they have to do is uh, reach out to me. Uh, I'm sure you would show by <laughs> email IDs and phone numbers. Uh, yeah, uh, we will. Can, uh, reach out to me. I'll be very happy to collaborate. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, now going back to your role at NSDC, uh, we would be really interested to know how it all came about. Uh, because uh, those days must have been very tough when you were deciding on, uh, you know, a model for Indian skilling ecosystem in terms of adopting the the standards, the NSQF, the QPNOS. Today we are actually using all this. So maybe a bit of history would be very interesting for us to know. Yeah, actually, uh, you're right. See, I, I joined NSDC in 2012 and uh, uh, I was just told two things that... Uh, you'll be heading the standards and quality and uh, you have to work with the sector scale councils, enable, be an enabler in creating those sector scale councils, you have to work and create the national occupation standards. Mm. Beyond this, nothing. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, the terms were new to me at that time also, as uh, they may appear. Uh, I didn't know anything about it. So all I did was that uh, Except that, you know, I have an interest in writing and I had in the back uh, what uh, impressed uh, at that time the NSDC people was my my writing abilities. I have I had some 30 plus published books to my credit. That was the only thing uh, which I had, which interest make, made NSDC interested that maybe this guy can do something. <laughs> so uh, once I, I got into NSDC, the, all, all the thing which I did was that I studied very intensely uh, couple of countries how they're doing it specifically I would say UK um, Australia uh, New Zealand to a certain extent all right and then I, I I found out what are the good things what are the bad things after doing an intense intense uh, desk study uh, mm -hmm. of how the sector skill councils are operating what functions they are doing etc and uh, how are they putting up their standards? What is the approval process? Uh, how are the industry validating? All those small, small things. So I did a lot of research on that. And then with the, my entire experience, we actually converted that whole story into how best fitment it will happen for, for India. Hmm. All right. And uh, that was presented to NSDC board. And finally, NSDC board... Uh, approved it that's how uh, we we created the whole framework uh, of how the qps will be created how the nurses will form part of uh, those qps uh, the whole whole jing bang around that right and more importantly how the industry is going to uh, endorse it yeah because without the industry endorsement it was going to be an academic exercise all right yeah so so industry uh, so we made a process around that and how uh, NSDC will play a role. And we formed something uh, called QRC, Qualification Registration Committee, which was basically the first, first level of clearing and seeing that all the compliances that we had specified for a qualification to be released are being followed by that or not. So we had said that uh, for every qualification which is made, you have to get uh, 10 large, 10 medium, and 10 small companies endorsing it. You have to bring them into a room and uh, take their feedback. And so that, you know, once the qualifications are coming, it should not happen that they have a skew towards the larger one or the smaller one or the medium one. So it has, it has to be a combination. So see what everyone is saying, what the... Bigger ones are saying remove it. What the smaller ones are saying remove it. Take the the central part of it. Mm. That forms the crux of that whole competency, right? Uh, per nos. So this is how we we created the structure and uh, the uh, the first QP which came to the market. Uh, make a guess. It was unarmed security guard. <laughs> that came back I think in sometime in 2000 early 2013 yeah 
that was the first and then of course automotive and uh, other people uh, people came in slowly by the time you know I, I i left the standards and quality and moved into another role within nstc some 2200 qualifications had got approved and finally uh, they were they were they were notified by nsda that time nsda was there Hmm. So they were all called as uh, the national standards, but yes, that was a very interesting journey. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. it was it was not only you see one thing was that you you created that, but then I I don't know how many training sessions I conducted mm -hmm. of people who are supposed to be making them on the field with the sector skill councils, their leadership, and the teams which were there. So many of them. Yeah. So many sessions happened, training sessions happened at different places all over the country. That's how slowly and gradually people got to know about it, learned about it. And that's how the whole movement started. <laughs> yeah, and it's almost 10 years now, uh, I think, uh, since it was introduced. And over the last few years, we do see good uh, traction and response from various training organizations. Yeah. And also, most of it is mandatory today uh, to get the government certification. Uh, but in the light of uh, NEP 2020, again, I think there are going to be a few changes perhaps uh, parallelly happening, uh, you know, to integrate with the higher education uh, system. That's what we hear and the credit-based framework. Absolutely, absolutely. And things like absolutely. that. Uh, but I think what is most interesting is the first time when, you know, the industry came forward and then, you know, you had to work closely with the industry. And like you said, it should not be just academic. It should have that industry orientation, uh, which will give it a skill focus. So that was very interesting to hear. So, uh, now, besides these points, uh, would you want to say something about how you foresee the future of uh, say QP knows these frameworks, you know, the competencies that are built in. How do you think this is uh, going ahead? Now we are talking about mainstreaming vocational education and today the scenario is different. Uh, the Ministry of Skill Development and, and Entrepreneurship and the Ministry of Education are working very closely. So there are quite a few changes. Uh, so uh, what is your opinion going forward? How do you see this unfolding? Yeah, absolutely. You see, uh... Again, you know, NSDC gave me very wonderful opportunities and one another opportunity which I got while I was part of NSDC when this new education policy was being formed. Okay. I was nominated by Ministry of Skills and NSDC to represent the ministry with uh, Dr. Kastuhi Rangan Committee, which was uh, formulating uh, these, these national standards. Oh, sorry, NEP, right? Mm -hmm. So I gave a lot of inputs and... Uh, uh, one thing I remember very clearly uh, saying at that time, I mean, a lot of, it was a very lengthy discussion, but one thing which I had said, you see, uh, we are all knowing that today uh, a sector skill council is conducting assessment, which is based on a qualification pack, on a job role. Hmm. In a job role has losses under it. I think when, when this new education policy is coming and you have to integrate skills into academics yeah right? this is a point where the the various you have to actually uncover the shell of a job role attached to the nurses make make a repository of those nurses for a for a sector right and bring out those competencies and integrate that into the academic system mm. instead of a certification happening at <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> at the QP level, is it possible to have some kind of a competency certification happening mm. where the competency of a job of, of a particular sector gets merged with the academics mm. and there should be credits being given to uh, those things and there could be a sequential logical competencies derived from the various aspects of it and integrated into the cat. So ultimately, I feel somewhere that you know, uh, I think if I if I remember correctly, forty. I think yeah, it's forty uh, forty credits to a certificate yeah. in the in the new new system, right? So if sector skill councils, uh, suppose somebody is doing uh, civil engineering, right? So why can't construction come up and you know talk about and integrate their skill because you know if you look the qcbs 
सॉरी ये द सीबी सीबीसीएस द फ्रेमवर्क चॉइस बेस्ड क्रेडिट फ्रेमवर्क इट हैज क्लियरली फोर कंपोनेंट्स वन इज द द द कोर एंड देन विद द कोर यू हैव एन इलेक्टिव विद इलेक्टिव देन यू हैव ओपन और अ और और अ और अ ग्लोबल ग्लोबल इलेक्टिव एंड आई थिंक द फोर्थ थिंग इज द स्किल्स राइट सो स्किल्स इज वन ऑफ द पिलर्स फॉर योर चॉइस बेस्ड क्रेडिट सिस्टम सो हियर my thought process now says is that somebody has to sit down and do this work of uncovering those qps the job roles and then getting those competency integrating that into the academic system and get out of that mode of the traditional uh, doing the certification on the job role rather than get into that uh, nos based certification sector skill councils can do it and see that at least 40 credits mm. come into a graduation program okay mm. is what i see it's it somebody will have to actually sit down <laughs> on the table and and do it but uh, it's important and this is high time the sector skill councils do it otherwise somebody else will take that their place and and do it because with ncvt giving permission to a lot of organizations who can come up with their uh, own qualifications mm -hmm. if sector skill councils don't step and do it somebody else will do it because but the need is there at the moment of integrating skills into the education as the new education policy says okay okay so so besides all the points you shared and the elaboration that you made about uh, the credit system and the integration of skilling is there something else you would wish to share uh, with our audience before we close this conversation see one thing which um, is my desire i would say very keen desire and i think madhuri uh, you are today sitting in that position to to do it in a perfect manner you see i i always had a desire that uh, somebody should attempt to write the history of nsdc <laughs> how it has moved from uh, a point from where it started it has a very strong pillars in legacy the people who are there initially who actually made the foundations of uh, they are all getting lost somewhere people mm -hmm. are forgetting them i think if you can if you can work towards creating and writing and and i am very happy to support and i am sure a lot of my old colleagues we have our own uh, whatsapp group also <laughs> they'll come forward and help you write uh, that particular why i'm saying this is why this is needed is because that is one organization which was created with lot of thoughts which were put in a public private partnership how industry and uh, government system will collaborate into the whole piece and uh, so somewhere i see uh, during this whole journey uh, that industry has suddenly uh, not suddenly over a period of time has lost the interest for whatever reasons you know that whole piece and probably if we make them recollect the past how 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 interestingly the whole thing started how it was supposed to be benefiting all so if if we can if we can make people think about it once again and uh, if we can put a renewed life as you said you know new education policy is there and this is a place where all sector skill councils and sdc can play a big role once again as we did it In 2012, 13, 14 initial years, this is the time again to get renewed. So let people remember about it once again and uh, think about it. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, definitely, we'll think about it. It's a wonderful idea and suggestion, and uh, we are always excited to look at you know the historical perspective and uh, kind of document things because they are the. It's like something we need to treasure and learn from, as we say. So, thank you, sir, for giving us your time. I look forward to be in touch with you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Madhuri. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.